Hey everyone, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel. Real quick, before we get started, please do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, click on the notification bell, comments and questions down below in the comments section. Love, 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 love comments and questions. Today's video, video one of two, we're gonna discuss the income approach to valuation. It's a type of appraisal. Uh, there are two methods of determining value based on income. It's using the gross rent multiplier and the capitalization method. But in this video, it's all about the gross rent multiplier. So let's check it out in this video. Okay, real quick before we get into the gross rent multiplier, I know this is killing a dead horse, but there are three approaches to value. You have to know these for your real estate license exam. There's the sales comparison approach, sometimes called the market data approach, where we, we determine value by comparing properties that have recently sold that are similar to our subject property. If you have not watched that video, please put this video on pause and go back and watch that one because it will help you understand the gross rent multiplier uh, formula. The link is right up here in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Approach to value number two is called the cost approach. This is for valuing those unique properties such as municipal buildings and, and uh, churches and whatnot where we consider the property's cost to rebuild. And then there's the income approach. That's what we're doing today. There are two videos, today's video and tomorrow's video. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna discuss the, grant, uh, the gross rent multiplier and then the uh, capitalization method, the two methods of using uh, the income approach to value. Now, as I said, gross rent multiplier is the first formula, the capitalization method is the second formula, but I do want you to notice there is a distinction between the two formulas that you absolutely have to remember. The gross rent multiplier is based on monthly rent, first of all, and it's gross income. When we talk about in the next video, the capitalization me method, that formula requires the net operating income. There's a big difference between gross income and net income. And in fact, it's interesting because the gross rent multiplier is the gross monthly income and the capitalization method uses the net annual net operating income. So you have to know those two uh, differences or otherwise any question that you get on your exam, uh, you're totally going to screw up. But don't worry, we're gonna cover all of that in both these videos. So let's talk about the gross rent multiplier. Now on your screen, I have gross monthly rent multiplier. The reason I did that is because depending on which test you're taking from which provider, uh, is it PSI, is it AMP, they call it different things. So in some areas of the country, they call it the gross monthly rent multiplier and in other parts, it's called the, just the gross rent multiplier. So you have to know they're one and the same. But the formula is the gross income that our subject property, the property that we're trying to determine the value on, it takes into consideration the subject property's gross rent income per month, and then we multiply it by a factor, a number called the gross rent multiplier. We get the gross rent multiplier, or what we call the GRM, uh, from comparables, all right? And then that determines the subject property's value based on the income that it produces. And it's a three-step formula. And when we're doing the calculations, there's step one, step two, and step three. And that's how we're gonna do it here in this video. So let's take a look at this. Step number one, we need to calculate the gross monthly income of our subject property. Remember, the subject property is the property that we don't know the value on and we're trying to find out what it is using income. So let's say it's a triplex. That means there's three units that's being rented out. Each unit is renting out for $500 per month. That means that it produces, this triplex produces a $1,500 in gross income or gross rents. All right, so that is step number one. We've calculated what the subject property's gross monthly income is. Step number two is calculating the gross rent multiplier. Now, how do we get the GRM? 
Well, we're going to kind of do what we did in the sales comparison approach to value. That's why it's really important to understand that process before you jumping, jump into calculating things using the GRM. But what they're going to do is find, a, you know, three comparables. The appraiser is going to go out and find three comparables. So three triplexes that have sold in that community. And they're going to use those comparables to generate our gross rent multiplier or the GRM. And on your screen, what happens is they're going to take the sale price of each comparable and divide it by the gross monthly rent that that comparable generated. So let's look at comparable number one. Comp one sold for $168,000. It generated $900 in gross income. So we take 168, we divide it by, or 168,000, we divide it by 900. That gives us a factor, a number of 186.67. That's called the GRM. Comp number two sold for 171,000. It generated $850 in income. So we divide 171,000 by 850. We get a GRM of 201.18. Comparable number three sold for 173,500 divided by its gross income of $900, that gives us a gross rent multiplier of 192.78. So we've calculated the GRM for the comparable properties. So what's our GRM? And that's a great question. What we don't do is add the three GRMs together from the three comparables and divide by three. That's the lazy way to do it. What we're going to do or what the appraiser is going to do is out of comparable number one, two, and three, which one feature wise looks most like our property. And I'm not going to go into detail because we discussed that in the video with the sales comparison approach. But in our example, let's say comparable number one is the one that the, the appraiser determined is most like our subject property. And comparable number one has a GRM or a gross rent multiplier of 186.67. So we've done step one, we've calculated our gross income. We've done step two, we've calculated our gross rent multiplier. Now step number three is applying the formula. So we take $1,500, which is the subject property's gross income, we multiply it by the GRM of 186.67. That gives our subject property value of $280,005. That's the formula. For your licensing exam, you don't have to go any further. You're done. You know how to do the gross rent multiplier formula. You know how to input the, the numbers in the question. You're done. I want to do a sidebar here. It has nothing to do with your, uh, with your licensing exam. This has to do with your profession once you're licensed and you get into the, into the business. If you work in this area, if you work in the area of investment property, and I spent many years in this arena, a red flag should have went up here. Just looking at the comparables and looking at our subject property, the first thing you should have noticed that our subject property is generating $1,500 in income. Look at comparable number one, the one that was used by the appraiser. It's only generating $900 in income. What, what's going on there? Well, number one is maybe, a big maybe, but maybe the uh, appraiser used bad comparables. Maybe, probably not though. Here's probably what happened. Assuming that these are recent. I mean, if these comparables are 10 years old, then that's a bad comparable. But Many times it's been my experience uh, that the first thing that came to my mind here was comparable number one, two, and three had a landlord that was terrified of raising the rent. And probably it was anywhere from 40 to 60% undervalued on its monthly rents. And it is something that happens all the time. Ask any property manager, they're going to tell you when they take over a property from an owner, a landlord, typically it can be uh, you know, 30, 40% under rented. And there's a lot of reasons why the landlord maybe has a long-term tenant and they don't want that tenant to move. And they're afraid if they increase the rent, the tenant's going to move. Not saying it's good or bad. That's just the reality. Maybe the owner just doesn't know uh, what the 
going market rate is for monthly rents for their properties. That's usually another indicator or another issue as well. The point is, comparable, the owner of comparable number one, two, and three really shortchanged themselves by under renting the property. It is so important for investors to keep those properties at market rate because remember the income that's produced by these properties is converted into the value. And these owners of comparable one, two, and three maybe have screwed themselves uh, out of several thousand dollars in valuation because they under rented their properties. So I wanted to just do a sidebar because I knew I was gonna get the question in, down below. Hey, why is our subject property so much uh, higher in value than the comparables? Well, that's probably it right there, okay? So anyways, I just wanted to address that discrepancy there. I wanna now do an actual uh, sample of a test question you might see. It says that a comparable duplex, remember comparable duplex sold for $225,000 with gross rents of $1,500 per month. If the subject property rents at $900 per month, remember the subject property is that property we need the value for. What is the subject property's value? That's what that question is asking here. Remember your formula, gross income times GRM equals value, and it's a three-step process. Step number one, let's find the subject property's gross income. Well, the test question told us that the subject property's gross monthly rent is $900 per month, so we have that. Step number two, find the gross rent multiplier using the best comparable. Now again, I'm not gonna go into the process Watch that other video I did on the subject or the, on the sales comparison approach. But let me give you an example here. Maybe the, the appraiser looked at uh, three different comparables and discovered that comparable number one is the most uh, like our subject property. They divided the sale price by the gross monthly income. That gave us a gross rent multiplier of 150. So step one, we got the subject property's gross income. Step two, we calculated the gross rent multiplier. Number three, we apply the formula. So in our formula, it is $900 that are of gross income that our subject property is producing. We multiply it by 150, which is the gross rent multiplier. The value of our subject property based on this practice test question is $135,000. That's the formula. Real important to remember, you have to remember these formulas. Gross income comes from the subject property. The GRM comes from our comparables. And then this method of calculating value, the GRM is for those small residential income producing properties, single family home to a fourplex. All right, so don't forget the formula. All right, now before we go, I'm gonna kill this dead horse and I know you're sick of hearing me saying it, but I need you to remember three approaches to valuation. There's the sales comparison approach, there's the cost approach, and then the income approach. There's two methods of calculating income in the method approach, the gross rent multiplier, which we discussed here. The next video right here to my right, that is use, that's calculating uh, valuation based on income using the capitalization formula, or what we call the capitalization method. All right, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click the little circle to my left. And that's it for this video. I will see you in the next video.